Welcome back to my series on grid trading and writing code for various methods of grid trading. This is a follow up to a video which introduced a technique to close all of the trades when we reached certain equity targets or certain profit targets. Now, if you've just stepped into this video and you haven't seen the earlier videos, so you don't know how I got to this point in the code, you don't need to watch every video on the playlist because they do branch out onto specific topics. But if you want to follow through to the point we are at now, there will be a list in the description that shows you the videos that you need to see to get to this starting point. At the end of the last video, we had a working code that would capture the starting equity and close all of the trades in the grid at equity profit points and would also track that starting equity in case of restarts. But the other thing that I want to do, and I ran out of time in the last video, is to show how you would track that if you're running more than one copy of the expert or some other experts or doing some manual trading as well, because all of those things will also affect the equity. So today, I'm going to show the code that I will use if I want to just track the profit that's made by this expert on this set of symbols and then close all of these trades for this expert when we reach certain profit targets. I have the code here as it was at the end of the last video. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new version. So now I've created version 1.007 uh, and so far it's exactly the same as the last version. I'm not going to remove all of this equity start code. I'm just going to leave it there, but I'm going to put a flag in that will use as a condition throughout the code to determine whether I'm working on a simple equity model as from the last video or whether I'm tracking the profit for this expert. And so use simple equity if that's true I'll just be using the equity start if not then what I'm going to do is store the start date or the date since the last time the expert reset and then I'm going to track all of the profit and loss on all the trades closed since that point and then add to that all of the profit or loss on trades that are currently open So the start time since the last reset I'll be keeping in this profit start time variable and I'm going to store this in global variables the same way I did with this equity start. The key was suitable earlier when I only had one expert running, but if I have two, then I'm going to have a different key because I need to know the symbol and the magic number for this expert. And now I'm going to duplicate this for the profit start time. So I will need to create this set profit start time function. I'll just go down to the set equity start and duplicate that. And now in OnTick, if it's a new bar, I also want to update the profit start time. And I have to update this function or this code. The profit, if I'm using the simple equity model, is equity minus equity start. But if not, then I'm going to add a new function that will give me the sum of that open trade profit or loss plus the sum of all the profits on trades that are closed. And then when I do close all the trades, I want to reset the profit start time. So now all I need to do is create this get profit function. And to get the total profit, I have a get profit closed, should be function and a get profit open two more functions that I need to write 
I'll start with the get profit open because that's quite a simple function. So all I'm doing is looping through all the positions, selecting by index for all the positions that match the index, the current symbol and the magic number. And then I'm calculating the, or I'm getting the profit, the commission and the swap, adding all of those to the accumulated profit. Now, I realize that I also don't have this position info yet. So I'll go back to the top of the code and set that up. So that should take care of everything just for the currently open trade. So what I might do is compile this to make sure that everything's working before I get on to adding the profit for the closed trades because that's more complex. Um, to do that, I'll just modify this. Conversion from double to date time, ah yes. So what I need to do here I'm just going to cast this. The GV get and the GV set both return types double. And this should be a date time. And no errors or warnings this time. So now I can get on to writing this get profit closed function. Now when looking through history, first I have to call this history select function and this is MetaTrader 5. I have to call the history select function to load the history that I want uh, and I'm loading history from profit start time plus one. If I just use profit start time, I would also get all of the trades that I closed the last time that I closed everything and reset. So I'm just adding one second to that, which will give me all of the trades that were closed after that. So this will load all the history from profit start time plus one up to now. And then I'm just getting the total of the deals. So history will also load orders. I want the deals because the deals will tell me the profit that was made each time a trade is closed. So I'm setting total equal to history deals total. And now I'm going to loop through all of those deals. So first I use history deal get ticket with this index and store that in a ticket variable. There is no need to perform any history select after this. Once you perform history deal get ticket, this indexed deal is the deal that's in memory. If you perform any kind of history select after this, because you can do a history select by ticket, then it will erase everything that you did here and you'll only have that one ticket in memory. So now that I have a deal, I want to make sure that it's a deal that was created by this expert. So if ticket is equal to zero, then it means that this failed, so I'll just continue. If history deal get string for the ticket is not equal to the current symbol, I'll just continue. And if history deal get integer for the ticket and the deal magic is not equal to the input magic, then continue. Now also when you're scanning through deals, Deal can be set when you open a trade and another deal when you close the trade. So I only want the deals for closing the trades. So I get that with history deal get integer ticket and deal underscore entry. And the type I'm looking for is deal entry out, which means that I'm exiting from the deals.
and then I get the same three values, the profit, commission, and the swap, and I'm getting that from the deal. And then just return profit. Just make sure that all compiles. It does so there are no compiler errors in there. So what I've done here, get profit open is simply scanning through all of the open positions and accumulating the profit from the profit, commission, and swap values. Get profit closed is scanning everything from the last reset time plus one second until now, choosing the deals, not the orders, deals, and then I'm making sure that that deal is for the current symbol, magic number, and that it's an exit deal. And then I'm accumulating the profit commission and swap from that deal. Now there is a small problem with this, um, and I'm just choosing to ignore it at the moment. In MetaTrader 5, it is possible for a broker to charge commission either on the entry deal or the exit deal or both. So at the moment, I'm only reading the exit deals, deal entry out. So I'm only picking up any commission on the exit deals. If your broker is charging commission on entry in as well, then you may want to also search for the deal entry in and just accumulate the commission from those trades. But I'm not going to worry about that today. It's usually not a very large number. So I'm just going with this. And so that's all it takes to modify this such that you are calculating the accumulated profit on deals that are closed, plus the accumulated profit or loss on deals that are still open. And if the total of that hits a given profit target, then you can go ahead and close all of trades. I hope this has been useful to you. Um, there are some interesting little techniques in here. In the next video, I am actually moving on to another suggestion to improve the grid trader. So not just more coding, I'm actually showing how to do something different. So if you want to join for that, remember click subscribe and then click the bell icon to be notified when that video is released. And if you're getting value from these videos, then please click the like button. It helps us a lot. Thank you for watching.